My name is Nikos Paragios and I'm a professor of uh, applied mathematics uh, at the Call Central, which is now called Central Supelec. And I have been founding from ERC between uh, 2011 to 2016, and now I have a follow-up grant, which is called ERC POC. And I'm going to talk about actually the work we did uh, over the past five years. Uh, the difference between me and Stanley is Stanley is just starting, so he has uh, a much more ambitious uh, 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 roadmap ahead, which I have. Uh, I, I, I'm in the situation to see what was done. So um, I believe that uh, the reason why you are living better actually is simply because uh, the quality of life has changed, and then technology has progress progressed a lot. Uh, if we take uh, into account the typical uh, uh, disease, I mean any disease you can imagine, there are two things you have to actually uh, handle. The first is uh, uh, when you make the diagnosis. And we all know that uh, the sooner we do the diagnosis, the better it will be. And the second question is how you actually you can decide the most appropriate treatment uh, given, taken into account uh, the diagnosis you have made and uh, the person itself. So we moved, uh, I think, during the past uh, 20 to 30 years for something which was generic uh, disease treatment where we had the type of diseases, we have the individuals and then we're treating them uh, to something now which is what we call personalized digital medicine where uh, we develop specific models uh, both uh, to better understand the disease at the individual level as well as to predict what's the best uh, outcome of treatment. So if we look uh, what are the challenges in this kind of setting, uh, first we have to get information and uh, what is happening now is we're going to apply, we're going to ask uh, different exams to be taken uh, care, we're going to do imaging, we're going to do blood tests, we're going to do DNA tests, so that's the first thing. And then what is going to happen is the physicians will try to integrate all these things together uh, towards making the most appropriate diagnosis. And what is important to say is that uh, these disciplines often they don't talk each other and the information, uh, even if it's complementary, it's not that straightforward uh, to in be integrated in, a, in the decision process. And the outcome, the desired outcome, will be to be able to predict or make the right diagnosis as early as possible. And as I said even before, uh, being able to decide personalized treatment, even if it's the same it is for different people. So the objective of uh, my ERC grant was actually to do something very uh, relatively similar uh, with what uh, Stanley uh, would like to do. Uh, we like to explode the availability of data. That means we have more and more open platforms. And uh, for these platforms, we have instances or we have acquisitions depicting the, depicting the situation of a patient before the disease arises. So if you have this kind of information, what you would like to do is you would like to build a predictive modeling at different scales which will be able at any given time to predict what will be uh, the evolution or what will be the state of an organ or a disease or a tumor a time ahead. So the objective is to use uh, intelligence and in this means advanced mathematics, which will be able to gather as much information as you can from individuals then agglomerate them together using uh, databases where we have different individuals and then come up with a generic mo model which you will be able to customize at the individual level uh, to make the most appropriate decision. That was the idea. If I want to be more specific, I will try to give you a very simple example, which is cancer. Uh, in cancer, what is happening is uh, uh, even if we know that the treatment uh, planning uh, should be uh, adjusted as a function of time, because the patient is uh, changing anatomy, uh, this is happening for only one or two percent of the cases, while physicians, they say that you should do it for 25 percent. So what we were able to demonstrate in this project was that by taking into account the anatomy changes and by building this predictive modeling of uh, digital patient for, for any given person, you should be able actually to precise deliver the radiation where it's supposed to go, while at the same time eliminate uh, secondary effects and metastasis. So building these uh, numerical simulation models would have a tremendous impact in uh, uh, the way we deal with diseases, the way we customize treatment, because we move forward from what used to be a generic model of treatment now to individualized treatment, which actually depends on the person himself. Okay? And the way we do that is something uh, uh, very fairly common, uh, means using uh, what I call artificial intelligence, where what we know is that humans are not that good on agglomerating information. So our brain is extremely powerful and is able to do fantastic job. But we, don't know, we know that when we go to what we call high dimensions, 
when we have to reason on information which involves parameters, measurements coming from huge spaces, our brain is not able to do it. We are not trained to do that. That is the idea. And the best way to optimize uh, treatment outcome is by taking into account this information. So the decision is not going to be based only on what you are seeing, which is imaging. It's going to be based on what, is, uh, what are your genes, which is going to be DNA. It's going to be based on biology. So what we have uh, now to make the most appropriate call is the diversity of information. Okay. And we know that human brain is not able to agglomerate that. We know that we are not able to, because of the dimension of the space, and that's why we need what we call advanced models, advanced mathematical models, and that was one of the objectives of my grant. How you using data from uh, numerous individuals of same or different diseases, how you can build predictive modelings, uh, predictive models, which will be able to predict the evolution of disease and even further to customize the most appropriate treatment. So if we look on the future, what I think is going to happen is that the position of uh, science uh, in the uh, decision-making process of uh, health-related issues will become more and more important simply because, as I mentioned before, even if humans can do a fantastic job on some specific tasks, there are tasks that go beyond our ability to apprehend and understand. So from my viewpoint, the future will become, uh, the future uh, algorithms in the future will have a great impact and artificial intelligence will play a huge role not on how we treat patients, but how we provide the most appropriate information to clinicians and to physicians to make the most appropriate call. Thank you very much. Nikos, I have a very simple question for you. You mentioned what to do with the data and that artificial intelligence may be part of the answer. What about data collection? What, what are the, the best ways to collect all this data, especially uh, at an early stage of the disease? So, uh, one comment and then ask the shorter question. I think artificial intelligence is something that is a hype today. People use it very often for different reasons. I mean, so, I think uh, what we're trying to do is we try to gather information that cannot be interpreted by humans. The algorithms that we're applying are not as advanced ad as what our brain does, but the brain, our brain is not able to do this kind of things. So what we're doing is we're developing mathematics that can reason on these high dimensional spaces, and that's the state of artificial intelligence. We are not yet to the level of the human brain, which is able to reason and make decisions based on rules. If I go to, uh, if I want to answer to your question now, I think uh, there are a lot of initiatives of open data, and I think that's something that uh, should be uh, uh, even enhanced, or I mean, even from the European Union. There are plenty of questions. There are ethics questions. How you deal with ethics? I mean, the moment that you are able to build this kind of models, I mean, which necessarily you have to do it with collaboration with hospitals and physicians, the question is how you will use them. So getting the data is one thing, then having the models and customizing to a patient is another question. And, the, que and the, the, the important thing is what you will do with them. I mean, they can be a very powerful t tool on choosing the most appropriate treatment, but they can be used for other reasons as well. So data should come from the hospitals. We should deal with ethics issues beforehand. This is very important. Clinicians and physicians should be in the loop. And most importantly, patients should be in the loop. Good. So, how um, how is your ERC grant helping with connecting with uh, all these important groups? Is it in any way? Actually, uh, physicians they always have uh, plenty of uh, interesting ideas. Uh, usually, they don't have time, which I think makes sense because they have uh, more serious things to do than talking to engineers or scientists. They have to save lives. Uh, the fact that actually we have uh, substantial support coming from Europe allow us to hire people either at the lab or at the hospital. And this makes a big difference. I mean, uh, collection of data is something painful. It's not rewarding for the hospitals. Uh, harmonizing the data also takes time. So the ability to have resources which are dedicated on this uh, step of the process uh, is, uh, is, 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 is huge. I mean, it makes, the makes a huge difference.